Welcome to my presentation on a new teaching approach or a new um, approach to examining actually that we come up with uh, in the German department at the University of Bristol. Um, some of you might have um, been to the almost famous presentation on uh, the, uh, the online grammar in Bristol. So this kind of interlinks and the two of us are really into new media and how to um, teach using as much as new media the opportunities we're getting from the new media. And um, the problem we're facing in Bristol is twofold. On one hand, we've got a grammar dilemma, which we're going to talk about very briefly. And on the other hand, we wanted to come up with a new way of, um, a new approach to oral exams. And the grammar dilemma is as follows. We've got students who are really, really good at grammar. We call them the grammar geeks. The people who really enjoy learning grammar. The people who have the advantage of having been to a school with really good teachers who appreciate that language has a backbone, and that is grammar. And um, the other students, we call them the grammar improvers, the ones that need a bit of help. Um, and to have them, the two of them in one classroom sometimes poses problems because the grammar improver needs a lot of help and the grammar geek gets bored by the grammar teaching that is happening because it isn't, it's just not enough for them. And then the oral exam in year two. In TV1, we've got an assessed group discussion. So people um, sit together in groups of up to four and um, they talk about a topic that we've dealt with in class. It can be um, year two topics and usually um, with their year one in mind. So they talk about um, the economy, they talk about um, stu um, student placements, um, internships, um, they talk about work, they talk about um, going to the doctors, so stuff um, associated with the year broad. And then in TV2, well, we wanted to go away from the old fashion. Okay, let's have the student come into the office of the lecturer and then they have to talk for 15 minutes on a text they have been given five minutes before, or they, they do another group discussion. We wanted to have something um, that is a bit more, <coughs> um, and especially because in, at Bristol we had a change so that um, up to last year, year two marks in language did not count for the final year mark in language and now this has all changed. So year two does now count for the final year mark. And we see on the issue year three that before they go abroad, their language is, in, is not as good as it is when they come back, obviously. We want to give them a chance to prepare and learn together and really reflect on their learning styles and give them a chance to focus on pronunciation and, and their speaking skills without really the, the big sledgehammer above them that they think, I, I don't really, I'm not that good at oral skills at the moment, I'm really looking forward to improving, to learning, to going abroad, but this might be a really big thing for my oral mark in year four. So the solution to our problem of grammar and oral exams together was in TV1 we have regular in-class grammar tuition. We focus on, um, by, T uh, by year two they should know their grammar, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be anything new. But we go back to the topics that um, they find hard. So in German for example it's sentence structures, it's so different from English. Then um, it is passive, the passive voice, topics like these, big topics that they should know, but they keep making mistakes, and these are really big mistakes, because they happen, so it, it is part of um, the language they use in, in a lot. And then um, year two has access to the online grammar course, which is an online grammar tutorial um, prepared by the lecturers, really for the, the topics that they find the hardest, and they can go back to it and uh, access it on Blackboard and do tests. So it is like a little, um, they can even access it on their PDAs and it is like a small grammar booklet just for them. And the grammar movie project for TV2. So what is the grammar movie project? 
<coughs> well, the aim is to develop primary awareness and self-teaching skills. We're wanting to create something that um, gives them a wide variety of um, methods and, and also to have it as self-reflecting um, as possible to make them the teachers, to take them out of it of the usual, they sit there, somebody talks, I either listen or I don't. And obviously we wanted them to practice and improve their oral skills because a brown movie project counts as their oral mark for TV too. It should be modern and e-learning compatible because that is our game, uh, um, our aim. Um, it should be student friendly, it should be interesting for them. It should also introduce our students to self-critiquing. They should ask themselves questions. How do I learn? What do I have to do to improve? And also the learning styles. We place great emphasis on um, our students understanding learning in itself. Before, each, um, before we start teaching each year, we go through the basic uh, principles of learning with them. We give them a chance to actually understand their own learning so that they can tailor their learning to themselves and what their um, learning style is. Because as teachers, we, we know the learning styles, but we cannot cater to everybody's needs 100%. So we try to give them the understanding so that they can um, help themselves Okay, so what is the assignment? What does the uh, Brand Movie Project look like? It is meant to be in the target language, in our case this is German. It consists of a short teaching sequence so that the students as a small group have to teach a grammar topic that is already known to them. So it is nothing new, which is important because we still want to be the teachers. We are not giving the students the classroom, it's all yours, we are just watching. And uh, part of this teaching sequence they do is a movie presentation. The movies are about up, up to eight minutes. They also have to come up with a handout, summing up the most important um, aspects of this grammar topic. They can give tips on how, why do they find a certain way of approaching this grammar topic more easy or easier than another one. <laughs> they have to come up with suitable exercises. So, which exercises do they think help them learn? Which ones um, are not so good? That's the reflective post. They shouldn't give out hand out um, exercises they don't think is good. It just makes them think, okay, how do I learn? Which exercises help me, which are completely useless? And what we're going to um, introduce this year is a reflective report in English where they have to. Um, <coughs> go back and think about the entire thing. But also, um, we uh, encourage them to keep notes throughout the process to make this reflective report easier to write. And this is all very student-centered, but the lecturer has to do some management as well, which starts with um, splitting the students up in appropriate groups. There are a couple of approaches of how to do that. Um, Sometimes it works, uh, depending on the group, it works nicely if you have um, a very good student work together with weaker students. But it all depends on the individual students. Sometimes it works really well to have just the good students work together and a couple of weaker students who can then do it at their level. It, is, it has uh, pros and cons for each and every approach. With, uh, and it, it's really important that the lecturer knows the students which we can do uh, in Bristol if we have about 8 to 12 students per group. So we really get to know them. Then the topics are assigned in collaboration with the groups. We tell the groups, don't go the easy way. Choose a grammar topic you find hard, because the grammar topic you will be working on is a grammar topic that you will then know. It will become yours. You might start hating it. You might not love it at the end, but you certainly know more about it. And something we found out that we really have to do in, um, is help with time management. Tell them, okay, this is the assignment. This is what you have to present. Don't do it within a day. 
This laptop has the worst speeches ever. So, um, So she said, this is the grammar demo, and this is his little helper. And over the course of the video, um, the grammar demo is going to explain a lot of the problems um, people have with ending the germ, and um, the grammar demo um, is defeated in the end of the video. I'm really sorry about the sound. and how it works. So there's a grammar crisis in Germany because reflexive verbs are mistreated more and more. <laughs> and besides, um, they say that it's more important than the news that Angela Merkel has um, stepped back from her duties because of a sex scandal and Sylvia Berlusconi was announced as the new Pope. But they now focus all the news um, um, on the grammar crisis in Germany. And um, they go on explaining um, they will now um, switch to a um, special studio with experts. And these two experts are then going to talk about the grammar um, crisis and the reflexive verbs, and what is so special about reflexive verbs, why we should keep them in the German language, and how um, speakers of um, foreign language can um, 
learn about reflexive verbs. <coughs> if you um, send me your, um, an email, just at um, edith.partner.ac.uk, I can send you the links to these videos because they are on a secret channel on YouTube. And if I send you the links, you're more than welcome to have a look at them with audio. The um, yeah, outcomes. What have we learned from this project so far? We've done it. Uh, we started it in 2010, and um, we've always um, got feedback. It was always informal feedback. This year we will have a, a, um, a proper feedback um, paper given back to students so that they can fill it in and give it back to us. So far, it's been informal feedback, um, but. We see that the, uh, for the topic that the students are working on, grammar comprehension has increased many fold. They really say they know it now. They had to research it. You cannot teach if you don't know what you're talking about. So they, um, there was a high intrinsic motivation to actually know what they're talking about. Um, can we talk about increased motivation? Uh, improved pronunciation. Because they can film sequences again and again. If they mispronounce something, if they have problems in pronouncing certain words, they can go back and fill it again. <coughs> Obviously, understanding learning styles, selecting the, the right exercises, uh, making a handout, thinking about um, the grammar and how they are going to teach it, um, helps them understand learning styles. They know that their peers that they're teaching have, um, need different learning styles to be incorporated in the exercises. Um, it is self-directed learning, being given the stage, um, and they can do it the way that helps them best, and they are the masters of their own learning. It's a very creative process, and um, right now the, the people who are in, in their year abroad and those who have already come back and are now in their final year, they have told this year's year two students that the Grand New Project is going to come in the second teaching block. And we already have students asking this, so, uh, and, uh, so what we're going to do in teaching block two, I heard we are going to make a movie, that is so cool. Can you tell us more about it? Um, so was that, just um, keep calm and we'll talk about it um, in, in week 14 when teaching um, commences again in Bristol. And it also teamwork team in, in the group as well <coughs> with employability and it is The mark that they are given is a group mark for um, the grammar movie project and the presentation they are teaching is a group mark. A reflective report is an individual mark. And we've, we've had cases where um, students complained that they had one, of, um, one member in a group of three or four that wasn't really collaborating. But again, then we asked them, so what do you think you could do differently? How can you make him work with you? What, we know it's hard, but um, it is again a learning experience for them. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard one. And um, we also use the movies, um, if they're really good, for up in issue and year one teaching. Because the students, they, they make these movies from a student perspective. We as lecturers were sometimes so in our ways, first certain things absent there that aren't clear for the students. And um, some of the movies of um, 2010 and 2011 are already part of the online grammar um, um, course. So problems that we've uh, encountered and that we resolved are obviously the IT problems, as I've just had now. I've prepared this and it worked, and now just the connection between the side and the computer doesn't work. We have we had to um, the first the first time for example students used um, video files that couldn't be played on university computers that was a problem um, but by giving them better instructions and all the guidelines and now says only use <coughs> these file types that has resolved that problem there was also misunderstanding in the instructions which led to the guidelines being improved over the years. Um, 
And another um, thing we got was that the um, that especially students from very good languages and students from quite good uh, grammar were a bit more worried about the IT side of it. So they thought they would be marked for making excellent <coughs> movies and that it was suddenly a, a, a film class and um, no longer a language class. But um, the, the creative side of it, the, the film side of it, is a minute part of the mark. I think it's about 10% of the overall uh, grammar movie or 15 grammar movie project parts. So in the whole picture of a year two mark and then year four mark, it's really negotiable. But they need feedback and uh, encouragement for that. Then uh, further areas of improvement. Um, every year we get new feedback from the students. We get new questions and we try to put them into the guidelines. Um, so it is more or less um, areas of improvement is given better guidelines so that they can have come up with these questions. And um, something else I should mention is that we've got a new multimedia center in Bristol with um, lots of equipment where they can go and rent movie ca um, film cameras. Uh, but most of them have um, digital cameras that are good enough um, to do these things. And um, I'm sure those of you who have digital cameras themselves, they're pretty good now. And some have HD qual um, quality. It's definitely not for what we are asking. Um, and um, we also have an IT um, technician, and his email is in the um, guidelines. So whenever they have problems with editing or whatever, they can go back and ask him as well can come back to us and ask us. So there is a network um, available for them um, and a safety line in case they have any problems. Ideas for the future. Um, we've got many. We want to um, keep the, um, the Grand Movie Project um, and um, probably if we have classes with really good students, maybe go into grammar topics that are a bit harder, depending on um, what they want to do. Um, and other than that, I'm open for suggestions, either now or by email. And, and this is the end of my presentation as well. Um, I'm here for you to questions and criticism. Um, we had them teach themselves. Um, as they were working together as a group, one of the, the people in the group is usually quite good about editing, and they've already done it before. Um, they can also go to the multimedia center and ask people there, um, how do I edit? Many of the programs are self-explanatory, and the guidance we gave them is, we don't, we don't care what program you use. Go use the program you like best. The only thing is, it has to work on the university computer, so you have to check that a couple of days in advance that you use the file that can be played in university computers. Uh, the university had support for the different systems? Yeah. A couple of questions, really. First of all, where do students upload the uh, programs? Onto your VLE, uh, their videos? Uh, they can, uh, we've got a system called Fluff. It's a um, facility for the upload of large files. I see. <laughs> something. Um, they, can, they can upload them, uh, they can send us a Dropbox uh, invitation. Mm -hmm. uh, it is part of the assignment that the, the lecturers can access it whenever they want to. Um, so we've asked these students that are in there if we can use the, their videos. Generally speaking, they, it's a Mars, so I can't go around and, and just show somebody who's already sent to somebody else. Um, so they've given us the okay. Um, it, it has to be on a USB stick, or it has to be um, on YouTube, and they give us the link, or they put it on any of the, the sharing websites, mm. or on the blog. Yeah, and how do they disseminate to the rest of the group? Because I can see, obviously, it's it's very valuable for that group to learn that particular topic. But does it get disseminated to the rest of the group, or 
Um, the um, bigger exercises, um, they get to talk about it, they usually talk about it in, in their group, and um, the topic has already been dealt with in, in GB1, in teaching, so it should, and it's not a new topic. Right. It's more or less giving them a chance to go through their, their work, what they find hardest again. I see, so it doesn't, well, I suppose the other students were not in that group, that was the question really. Do but they, they, they can access this if they, they wish. Well, they get it shown in, because right. the students teach and they use the movie as part of their teaching. Oh, right, okay, so they do a class session. Yeah, there is a class session that lasts about um, 12 to open it. I've had one group <coughs> be so excellent that I've been saying, well, um, kind of like, it's already 20 minutes. <coughs> um, because it was just excellent. It was, I was like, you don't even have to do teacher training. You just turn right into a school that was excellent. Maybe one or two more questions. Yes, I just wanted to know whether the tutors form the groups or do you let the students form the groups themselves? Um, that, um, we try, well, but as well I said, you have to be careful who goes together in, in groups. Sometimes, and it's good if you know your group, because sometimes you have three students who always try to be in a group and they never produce anything for them to do. Yeah, I was wondering if the geeks stay together and the groupers stay together. Um, also depends on the group. Um, if you want, uh, if you have very helpful geeks, if they are really um, outgoing, out and they, they <laughs> try to, um, they're not like I'm geeking you, the nobodies, um, and they, they they would be a good asset in, in one of the other groups. And you can try to put them the groups together that way. But it is a touchy subject. Generally speaking, how do you put groups together? I mean, you could. Would you allow somebody to do it individually if they didn't want to do it? Um, we haven't had that yet. I mean, there um, are people who are just not very good at working with the students. You know, it's a key skill, and uh, you said that was one of the, uh, the aims of the yeah. project, to facilitate group working skills. We've had teamwork happen, because they couldn't agree on, on, on groups of three, and that was fun. That we allowed that. But a single person, it's not really in the, um, in the, the aim of the Project. Maybe one last question. Yeah, um, I run actually a similar, <coughs> a similar um, project, similar in the sense of the shift between students and teachers, so students become teachers rather than similar in the sense of producing videos. But what, what di the difficulty I found, and again, it's also with advanced students with handling, so knowledge, so the language is not the actual barrier in a way because they're very fluent. And but what I found, the difficulty I found is that students don't really do it naturally to become teachers. And um, so the resources, that they need lots of guidance in finding the resources, which are, at first I really need what I have to say, not to say, well, actually, there is more out there. And there's the actual step, which is even more <coughs> difficult, is to create the exercises of the resources. And I found that. Um, they don't really, well, they don't really do it spontaneously. They really, they really, really need a lot of guidance, and I wonder whether you, you, you thought. And, and the resources they create is not always that. <laughs> um, so I'm not, you know, I was wondering if you had The movies in, as a whole were pretty good. We've had some in there where we thought, well, that wasn't really encouraging to learn anything about the topic of the putting your sleep watching it. But that, we give them feedback, we call them back into the office, we talk about that. Um, with the exercises they created, we were surprised how good they were, how motivating. Some of them came up with grammar challenges, they, had, they brought prizes in that, that could be won. And again, they never had people work individually when they made the challenges. They always split up their mates up in groups and said, well, there's um, a case of Red Bull. It can be won if, uh, by the group that fills in all the passive correctly or the most of the of cases. So we're quite, and then the exercises that they have come up with were good as well. And, and really um, good in from a teacher point of view. So we haven't had that problem yet. Yeah. But I can see that that must be. It's still so long, I mean, it is brilliant. And it, this, is, this is actually not a criticism at all. No, no, it's a reflection. Yeah. There is seems a, a lot of work on the side of students as well as you guys for 
what is this is a one component of the whole module. It's uh, so it's a bit, yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm impressed how you know how well they're doing it and taking it up because I you know probably most of us would be faced with this. How much does it how, how, how much does it count? Five percent? Well, I'm surprised by the fact that students actually never really look into the maths because it's a lot of work for like yeah. more than